Hello, and welcome back to Forge by Geeks. So today, we've I'm going to show you something a little bit interesting. So we've gotten a lot of questions over the past roughly year and a half that we've been streaming board games. And one of the biggest questions is, how the hell do we do these dynamic overlays that uh, you may have seen in a bunch of our videos? We show lots of stats of the board games, and this can be used both with board games, video games, any other content you happen to be producing on Twitch, on Facebook Live, on Mixer, on the service of your choice, YouTube Live, anything. It's all a matter of whether you're using XSplit or OBS. Now, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be showing mostly XSplit, but this there is functionality in OBS and several other apps to do the same exact thing. This is just the app we use and we're most familiar with, so I'm going to get on with it. Now, keep in mind, you see the link right up at the top. That link is to a free version of the tool that we're giving away publicly to everybody to use. It's very generic. If you'd like a custom version for your game or your needs or whatever, feel free to contact me. You can do so uh, using my email. That would be A-H-A-N-S-E-S -S at forgedbygeeks.com. You can also find that in that description between the video and the comments that no one ever reads. And let me know what you think about it. Um, also, order custom versions or whatever else you want. So now to get on with it, this is really easy to do and really easy to use. So this right now is a very blank XSplit setup. Uh, this is where you come in and it's just pretty straightforward. So normally, the most you can do is you can come in here, uh, oops, wrong link. You can come in here and choose you wanna add text. Now, once you have text pop in, you get this little add text feature. Now, within this is buried a custom script option. Once you choose that, you choose edit script, and then from with here and here, you can choose load text from local file. Now, I've pre-created some of these, and the app creates these for you, so you can't mess it up that easily. Once you save one time, it'll create it, and I'll get into that in a moment. But all you need to do is simply come in and find where the app has created your various text files, Choose one, load it in, choose update text, okay it, and now you've got the field created. It's that simple. But now you need to populate it with some data. So for these purposes, I will show you the generic app that we're giving away. Now, if you noticed earlier, I chose field one. Right now, it's blank in the app. That's the default. So let's say you wanted to put my player name in that field. Once you have that in there, all you need to do is click the save button. Now note, this is touch friendly. So if you happen to be working with, uh, with touch, you can do so. You click save, boom, there it appears. It just showed up right here and you can see the text is fully in there. You can resize it. You can change colors, add uh, borders, everything you want to do to this that you normally do. It fully, it's fully dependent on what you've set in your application. Then at any time you can go back and while you're playing your game or whatever, you can come in here and update this to something. Ah, and I can type while on stream. New, once again, you simply uh, click the save button and you'll see it instantly updates. And you can do this for as many fields as you want. All this is doing is you give it a location and this can be a network drive. We actually use it universally with network drives here when we stream. And it's also a multi-instance app. So you can have, uh, in our case, when we're playing Kingdom Death Monster, we each have, me and my wife each have two copies running, one for each character that we're playing. And we write out the individual fields for each character. Um, after you choose a location, in this case I've got C colon, you choose a file name. File name is a misnomer. It's actually the folder that it writes everything into. So if I come back to my folder here, you can see it. So this right here, I've mapped, uh, uh, that's what we normally use. But if I come in and go into the C drive, you'll see I've got now a player one folder created that the app that you saw before, right there, it shows player one. That's the folder it created. And then if we come in here, you have all the different fields and checkboxes as labeled and numbered on the application there. Now, if I open up field one, uh, you can see I've got the text as written right there. So now let's, uh, oh, yay for uh, cutting off my uh, overlays a bit. Let's bring this back. So if we close that down, 
and I come back in here and type, uh, let's do player name again, click save again, you'll see it update on screen, and as you can clearly see, it's also updated in the text file. So it's a very simple app. All it's doing is writing out those text files and resaving them. Um, but once again, very simple, very easy to do. Now for checkboxes, it's a little bit different. So we can come in here and you see nothing's in the checkbox. If we come up here, mark a checkbox, click save, come back, it writes out a, a capital letter X. What this is for is for some of what we do in our uh, larger overlay. Now this is the generic one that we have, but as you can see right here, oh, wrong one. As you can see right here, here's the one that we've made for Kingdom Death Monster. Now note, for the custom ones, I can do any number of fields, any layout, anything you'd like. So pretty flexible on what we're capable of here. But we have, for example, when we take brain damage and other effects, it can build up. So I'm going to minimize the giant X split that you see here, or I'm going to, where's that? Oh, I'm hiding it. Ah, give me one second here. Can't see my minimize button. There we go. <laughs> so uh, now you can see one of our normal kingdom death monster layouts. And I've got this configured right here to uh, go to Z colon, which as you might've noticed earlier is mapped as a network drive. So if I come back in here, you'll see I've pre-mapped our, our streaming PC where XSplit is running as the colon. I've got player folders for uh, my first character, my second character, and Nicole's first character and second character. Um, so now this is writing to my first character. So if I come in here and click save, you'll see a whole bunch of stuff update all at once. Boom, there we go. And as you can see, it completely refreshed the uh, orange player for our game. Now I can come in here and change any number of stuff in here. Add a few checkboxes, add a weapon name, and click save. And boom, you can see it all updates very quickly. So this is a very simple tool to keep uh, overlays that even have uh, potentially 100 layers or more up to date. There's only one small little issue is every now and then when you uh, load up XSplit or OBS, the text field won't update itself. So it might be blank or it might be out of date. All you need to do is go in. Uh, you can either right click on them on the text field down here or you can do it uh, over the actual field itself. But once you right click it, you choose refresh and it'll look at the file and it'll do it. So that is a step where if you have tons of layers like you saw with our Kingdom Death, where we're actually running upwards of 70 overlay text layers, you might have to do this quick refresh feature every time you load up your uh, overlay on each blank text file or on each blank text area, then once you've done that once, they'll stay up to date as long as the app keeps running. So thank you very much. And I hope that you found this helpful. Once again, if you have any questions, ask them below in the comments section. Uh, we also like to thank our patrons on Patreon. It's just a dollar per month to subscribe to us and you get direct access to us through Discord and other methods to uh, get a hold of me if you have any other questions. Thank you very much and I hope uh, this tool is useful to the community at large. Later.